This is my dog Apollo. He is in his favorite place doing his favorite thing. Watch me prepare his dinner and drool. Apollo drools every time he knows it's time to eat, but he sometimes drools when he only thinks he is going to eat, even though I have no intention of feeding him at that moment. And believe it or not, one man's observation of his dog's drooling back in the 1890s led to one of the greatest scientific advances and the basis of dog training. So if you've had enough of watching Apollo's adorable impatient face, I'll get to the point. You might have heard of Pavlov's dog, which apart from the 70s rock band is much more. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian psychologist back in the 1890s, 19th century before World War I, who discovered something too awesome and too simple called classical conditioning or Pavlovian conditioning by observing the salivation in dogs in response to being fed. The key to these observations was that his dogs would salivate every time he entered the room even if he was not bringing them food. Are you thinking, so what? Well, this salivation reflex is hardwired into the dog. In behaviorist terms, it is an unconditioned response, a stimulus-response connection that requires no learning. The dog sees the food and salivates, nothing weird about that. But why would the dogs salivate even if no food was present? Well, the reason for that is the core of classical conditioning. Pavlov discovered that any object the dogs had associated with food would trigger the same response, salivation and he dedicated his entire career to studying this type of learning. Learning? Yes, classical conditioning means basic learning. That's it. It's one of the simplest and coolest ways dogs and all animals learn. There are three simple steps to help the dog learn an association. One, a signal. Something the dog sees, hears or feels, like the leash clicking. In psychology, it's called neutral stimulus, because without any learning, it means nothing at all, unlike the food which causes a dog to salivate anyhow. Two, right after the signal, something else happens, well, something positively, hopefully. And this event, without any training, elicits a reaction to the animal. A nice walk, food on its plate, a treat. Three, repetition. If these events happen in the same sequence several times, classical conditioning happens too, aka the dog learns. During classical conditioning, the brain connects the two events, making them feel like they are the same thing. The leash clicking will make the dog just as happy as being on a walk, for example. In layman's terms, when an animal learns to associate two things, it means that the first thing will predict the second. You can teach your dog to do anything you want him to, as long as you help him associate the behavior you want from him to a stimulus you have chosen. Learning to sit for a treat, for example, is very easy, and the reason why dogs sit when asked to, even if no treat is available, is because they have associated the sit command to something positive, the treat. Like Pavlov's dogs would drool even if no food was present, eventually your dog will do anything you want him to, as long as you have followed the three simple steps above and have helped him make the connection. You can crate train, leash train, muzzle train, house train, as long as you help the dog associate the behavior you want from him with something positive. We often expect our dogs to behave and sometimes force them to do the right thing the wrong way, and this always leads to failure and bad behaviors. If your dog hates the crate, he has associated it with some kind of punishment, and that is your fault. You have conditioned him the wrong way. If your dog reacts negatively to wearing a muzzle, you have conditioned him to do so. If your dog never calms down, it's because you are constantly overwhelming him with attention, and this is like rewarding him not standing still for a moment. If your dog develops leash aggression, you have probably conditioned him unwillingly to react negatively at the sight of other dogs. When you take your dog out, for example, and other canines approach, you unconsciously pull on the leash and tense up in order to protect him, prevent a fight, etc. The dog feels your reaction and associates other dogs he sees on the street with the unpleasant feeling of being choked, so eventually he sees other dogs and tenses up. Classical conditioning is awesome and you can teach your dog to be the best behaved pet in the world simply by helping him associate anything you want him to with something positive. And since dogs learn a lesson from us every minute of the day, mistakes can happen very easily and most of the times unwillingly. Petting a fearful dog conditions him to think that hiding in a corner is the right thing to do.
Talking to a barking dog that craves for your attention conditions him to believe that barking is actually a way for him to get what he wants. I bark, I get the attention. I bark again, I get the attention again. Petting your dog while he's growling at your guests will not calm him down. On the contrary, it will make him associate growling with something positive that is petting, so the next time he will growl even more, or even bite. Usually unwanted behaviors in dogs become huge problems because most of us do the wrong thing when dealing with them. So before you run off to your trainer crying because your dog just bit the neighbor, try to do some simple things to help him understand which is the right thing to do. Avoid leash meetings, for example, on the street and help your dog understand that ignoring other dogs is a good thing. Ignore him if he barks at your guests and have your guests ignore him too. If you do so, then him barking will have no result whatsoever, so he will eventually calm down. Then reward him for being calm. People find it very hard to do nothing at all, and that is confusing for the dogs. Petting, feeding, talking, and even shouting at a dog are all positive reinforcements. So doing any of the above while the dog is behaving the wrong way will only reinforce that bad behavior. One last thing. Classical conditioning can work wonders, provided that you satisfy your dog's basic needs. So for backyard lawn ornaments that never get to exercise, or for teacup dogs that never get to leave the apartment and just pee on the balcony, no training method can ever work, no matter how much your laziness makes you believe otherwise. Uh -huh.